Hello everyone, sorry I couldn't be with you guys today. Uh, I tried to make this video for you guys to kind of roll through class like I was there. Um, so you'll just be going through the slides uh, with this video and then there'll be some stuff on, on code.org you guys will be working on today. Uh, first though, some reminders. So tomorrow is Friday and it's the end of the quarter. So if you have any outstanding work, just please make sure that you get it in. Uh, I went through and graded all the makes at this point and so your grades are more or less finalized unless you have something that you want to uh, update and so if you do have something you want to update you need to email me about that after of course you've updated it uh, and then I will be happy to go back and fix those for you but that needs to be done by tomorrow so I can grade over the weekend because grades are due on Monday so today we're gonna to be talking about um, the investigate for conditionals so if you remember back to Tuesday, what we were working on was uh, introducing conditionals and talking about how we can have these condi conditional statements, these Boolean statements, uh, that have a true or false value. And so today we're actually going to uh, look at what that looks like in the code. And so actually we're going to start by going back a little bit and just watching this video is going to kind of summarize what we talked about on Tuesday and then we'll get rolling into the next part. Maybe. When programming, it is often necessary to establish whether something is true or false so that a computer can make decisions about what actions are appropriate to take next. For example, when deciding whether or not to provide voter registration information, the computer must first determine if it is true that the person is old enough to vote. This is something that is done using what programmers call a Boolean expression. You can think of it like a yes or no question that the computer can evaluate. It's called a Boolean because it's named after the mathematician named George Boole, who made many discoveries related to working with binary true or false values. In the voter registration example, your Boolean expression might look like this. This asks, is the value stored in the variable age equal to 18? If it is, then the statement is true. Otherwise, the statement is false. Remember, the double equals is the equality operator. It asks if two things are equal or not. If you are using a single equal sign, you are using the assignment operator to set the value of a variable, which is something else entirely. In addition to the equality operator, we can ask questions about if one value is greater than or less than another value, and these are called comparison operators. If you saw the statement 3 less than 2 in math class, you'd think something was terribly wrong, but this is still not math class. In programming, you use the comparison operators to ask the computer a question, which it can answer true or false. So with this line, the computer sees you asking, is 3 less than 2? The answer in this case is no, or false. We can use a comparison operator in our voter registration example to make the program even more accurate. Because it's not just 18-year-olds who can vote, it's anyone whose age is 18 or older. So the questions you'd want the computer to evaluate should be, is the user's age greater than or equal to 18? Like this. Now that we can express the question, we can have the computer actually do something depending on whether the answer is true or false, such as displaying the registration info if true. We'll learn more about how to do that next. All right, so that was a nice little summary of what we saw with Boolean expressions. And so now we get to actually uh, write them in code, but uh, just being able to write the expressions doesn't really do me any good. So we actually not have to talk about how to uh, actually use those expressions to make a decision. So we're going to zip through this. Um, so what you guys are going to be doing is using this thing called an if statement, which we're actually going to introduce to you here. Uh, so here's another video. Our daily lives are filled with decisions, big and small. Even simple choices like what to wear usually are the result of complex considerations. What's the weather going to be like? What will you be doing today? Do you feel like making an impression or keeping it casual? But the world around us is constantly changing, 
So we want to adapt the choices we make to match the changing conditions. What's true for humans is also true for computer programs. We don't want our programs to always run in the same way. They should respond to changing conditions. In the last video, we learned how to use Boolean expressions to establish whether something is true or false. We can now add something called a conditional statement to help guide the computer's decisions based on that information. The simplest conditional statement is an if statement. It says that if something is true, the computer should run a specific block of code. Let's say that you want to create a program that displays whether or not you are old enough to see a PG-13 movie. So the question we want the computer to evaluate is, if age is greater than or equal to 13. The question, or Boolean expression, goes next to the if. The block of code we want to run, only if the condition is true, goes inside the if statement. So in our example, whenever the expression age greater than or equal to 13 is true, the program will write to the screen that you are old enough to see a PG-13 movie. All right, so now you guys are going to work your way to code.org and you're going to look at lesson, or this is, well, lesson six, but the uh, first stage there. Um, and so you're going to look at a set of code. And so those are, um, there, there's this game, it's called Lemon Squeeze. So what I want you to do is actually run through it first um, and just play the game, see how it works. And then there are three segments of code that I want you to look at. Those are lines one through 13, and then 16 through 30, and then 33 through 53. And so what I really want you to do is look at each of those uh, segments of code and then talk with the partner about how the app is making decisions during that time. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and pause the video, um, and then when we come back, I'll kind of take you through those lines of code. Okay, now that we're back, I'm going to actually escape out of this and go and look at the code myself, which I didn't open up. Um, that would have been good planning, I guess. But I'm going to navigate there real quick. Uh, to the investigating. No, uh, too far. Okay. So I'm going to take a look at this code here. Um, so the first segment that I cared about looking at was um, this first set here, 1 through 13. And so there's a really important difference that we need to talk about as far as apps being able to make decisions for us. And so one of those decisions is the on event. Uh, we're going to talk about these as like a when versus the if statements are obviously more of an if, and then we'll get to in a second. So when I, I say when, because these are always just sitting in the background. There's no Boolean logic going on here. They're just saying they're waiting for this thing to happen. And so that's one way something to make a decision for us. It just sits in the background and waits. And so in lines 1 through 13, what I'm doing is essentially setting up the game by whenever I press the play button, uh, it will set my score to be zero, <clears throat> my lives to be three, and then I'll set all the properties I need um, for the display. Then, uh, in line 16 through 30, um, what it does for us is uh, this is whenever I mouse over the lemon as opposed to lines 33 through 53, which is when I'm mousing over the lime. And so lemon's not super interesting. Um, all it's doing is that whenever my, um, you know, I've moused over this lemon, uh, it's going to re-randomize where I'm placing the lemon and the lime, and then it's just going to update my score by one. And so again, not super interesting, no conditional logic going on here, it's just listening for this in the background. Now when I get to mousing over the lime, I'm going to do the same thing where my life's, uh, the values decrease by one. Um, and I'm replacing everything again, but now I actually have a decision that's being made each time. And so it's not just waiting in the background, but it's actually being done each time. And so I'm trying to compare to see if my lives is less than zero. And if it is, that is when I get back to the, uh, the start screen, um, and it tells you how many lemons you've collected and, and then you can play again. And so what I want you guys to do is take like, you know, 30 seconds here and uh, modify this code so that um, this problem that we have right now is that the game keeps going when you're down to zero life. So go ahead and modify this 
so that it uh, stops when I when I get to zero lives. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, and so uh, it's a pretty pretty basic fix. All I need to do is add one equals here for less than or equal to zero. Okay, great. Uh, let us take us back to the slides then. All right. Um, so right now I can just make this one decision, but the question is, what if I want different things to happen depending on what uh, my my input is? And so that's where this if else statement comes into play. And so we'll watch another video here. Of course, some people will not be old enough. In these kinds of situations, we will want our programs to do something else when the condition is false. In order to do this, we will want to expand our if statements to include an else statement. The commands contained in this else statement only run if the Boolean condition in the if statement is false. In AppLab, you can add an else statement by either dragging out the if else block or by clicking the plus symbol in the bottom right corner of the if block. So the big thing with my if else statements is that it allows me to now make decisions where I can have multiple different, uh, you know, criteria decisions I'm trying to make this on. Um, well, or just two for now, but we'll see here in a second how I can actually add multiple multiple criteria. So uh, what you need to do is navigate to the next level after the video on code.org, um, and you're going to look at there's this new thing in there. Uh, which is this percentage sign. Uh, it's called the mod operator. And so I want you guys to take a guess as to um, what it does. And by take a guess, I mean read what the code says. Um, and then we'll talk about it here in a second. But go ahead and run it and see what happens. Okay, so now that you guys have seen that, um, what mod does is it's an operator. So it takes in two values just like any of my other operators do. Uh, so, you know, add, we obviously know adds things together, subtract does what we think it does, multiply and divide. And then mod, what it does is uh, it divides the first number by the second number and gives me the remainder then. So in this case, I would take three, divide it by two, and what my remainder is is one. Um, so it's this is remainder value. And so it comes up a lot of times. Um, one case in particular is if I want to check if a number is even or odd, which is what this code is doing. Uh, this is how I do it. You do it is with the, the mod mod operator. Um, so, for example, if I want to take 17 mod 5, uh, go ahead and pause the video now and see uh, what you think that is. Okay, so 17 mod 5, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to do some division here. Uh, I will take 17 divided by 5. I want to do this through long division or however. Um, but I know that that 5 goes into 17 three times. And so if I subtract that 15 out, what I'm left with is a remainder of 2. And so 17 mod 5 is 2. It's a remainder whenever I divide the first number, or sorry, yeah, the first number by the second number. Okay. So like I said, it's useful um, in a lot of different situations. Uh, the most obvious one that we're going to be looking at right away is whenever I'm talking about trying to determine if a number is even or odd. Uh, we'll actually use this later when we talk about encryption as well. It's really important there, <clears throat> but it'll come up a whole bunch of times. All right, so now uh, we can talk about a statement that um, really makes things useful. If I want to decide something based on multiple criteria, is linking together these ifs and elses, and so I can have an if else if uh, statement. So we'll go ahead and watch this video. Sometimes the decisions you will want your program to make have more than two possible outcomes. Let's continue our movie rating example, where we want to check whether the highest rating you can go see alone is an R-rated movie, a PG-13 movie, or just a G-rated movie. To check between these three different cases, we can add an else if statement. An else if statement is another condition that a program checks only if the previous if statements were false. So if age is greater than or equal to 17, write that user can see an R-rated movie alone. Else if 
the age is greater than or equal to 13, write that the user can see a PG-13 movie alone. Else, write that the user can see a G-rated movie alone. The else condition becomes the default condition because when all the previous if and else if statements are false, it will default to the else statement. Be careful as you construct longer sequences of else if statements. If you mix up the order, you might not get the behavior you intended. In our example, imagine we had switched the code so that the first condition checked if the user was old enough to see PG-13 movies, like this. This would mean that everyone who is 13 or older would be told they can only see PG-13 movies, even the adults. And with the next else if line, the computer would be looking for people 17 or older in the remaining group. This code misses the adults because they were true in that first condition. This won't work. The computer checks the conditions from top to bottom, so it is important to enter the most specific condition first. Okay, so the if else if statement um, is super important. I mean, this is this is what a lot of our decision making is going to be based off of, and uh, the order does very much matter because I will always enter into the if statement um, that becomes true first. So even if I have something that's later on that's also true, uh, I won't make it there if I entered into a previous if statement. It doesn't just go into all of the ones that are true. So. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, the second version of Lemon Squeeze. Um, so go ahead, play through it again, um, discuss with your partner what's different, and then go and find that if-else-if statement uh, in the program um, and talk about what it does. Uh, you don't need to make a flowchart for it, uh, but then go ahead and modify it once you figure out what it does so um, that it makes it even smaller when, when you get to 15 points. So go ahead and pause the video and try that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the code then really quick. Um, so I'm gonna navigate to the next one. So version two, uh, which you hopefully notice is that as you play this, um, it continues to get, or the lemon continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller, um, you know, in theory, making it harder to, to uh, click on. And so where do I find that in my code? Well, I'm not in the right one, that'd be, that'd be why. Um, where do I find that in my code? Well, it's right here. So on lines 23 through 32 is where I'm making a decision on what to set the property at for the lemon, uh, for its width and its height, uh, so that it is um, different sizes based on how many points I have. So where do I want to add this? I, or I forgot what it was. I guess I could just probably look up here. Uh, so it's even smaller when I get to 15 points. So the question is, where do I want to add this if at? And the answer is at the beginning, because um, you can see this progression as I go. Um, I start off with if it's greater than 10, and if it's not greater than 10, I'm gonna check to see if it's greater than five. And so what I'm really checking to do in this one here is that the only way I get into this, if it is greater than five and less than 10, because if it was less than 10, I would have gone to the fork first if statement. So I wanna add some code in here that says if, and then my score is greater than 15, uh, I want to do something, and what that's going to be is set the property to um, an even smaller value than what I was previously, so something even smaller. Let's just cut it in half again. Uh, and so we'll make this 30 and 30. And I just need to be careful here. I need to add in my else so that it actually connects it with the next part and then backspace to get this all in the same line. Okay, so now what happens is that if I do get to a score greater than 15, I will make it this size, but if I am less than 15 or equal to 15, but still greater than 10, then I'll enter into this second part here. But if I am less than or equal to 10 and greater than five, I'll enter in here and, and so on. And so it all, it'll chain all the way down. Okay, so now let's go back. Um, and so the question is how could we have made this a little bit easier then? And the answer is we could have done this with some of our uh, 
uh, logical um, operators that we learned about. And so what we can actually see is that we can chain these logical operators together. Uh, and so there's, of course, a video on that. We'll watch real quick. You can add even more complexity to your conditional statements by asking two questions at the same time. We use the AND and OR operators to check two Boolean expressions at once. Let's talk about OR first. If we wanted to, for example, express that you can be younger than 5 years old or older than 95 years old to get free admission to a museum, we could express that like this. Expressions that use the OR operator are true if either the first or the second expression is true. Only when both expressions are false does the OR expression evaluate to false. The AND operator is more strict. What if we wanted to say that to get the student pricing at the museum, you need to be between 12 and 21 years old? We could express that as checking whether age is greater than 12 and age is less than 21. If only one of these conditions is true, that's not good enough. Both conditions must be true to get the student discount. More and more complex questions can be represented with combinations of AND and OR statements. What if the museum gives the student pricing to everyone if it's Tuesday or Thursday? But on every other day, you still need to be between the ages of 12 and 21 to get a discount. We could express that like this. If the day is Tuesday, or the day is Thursday, or your age is greater than 12 and age is less than 21, then you get the student pricing. Else, you get regular pricing. When using text, use parentheses to group Boolean expressions together. When evaluating this complex conditional, the computer will evaluate each Boolean expression separately and then use the rules of AND and OR to determine if the whole expression is true or false. So if the day is Monday and the user is 25, the code would run like this. First, the computer checks if the day is Tuesday. It's not, so that is false. Then the computer checks if the day is Thursday. It's also not, so that is false as well. Since it's not Tuesday or Thursday, and at least one side must be true for an OR statement to evaluate to true, that whole expression evaluates to false. Then the computer checks the other side of the OR, since that could be true. The computer checks if the age is greater than 12, 25 is greater than 12, so that statement is true. Now the computer checks if the age is less than 21. 25 is not less than 21, so that statement is false. Since this was an AND statement, but only one side was true, this whole expression evaluates to false, and the message displays that the user gets regular pricing. For a human, perhaps this answer was obvious from the beginning, because we are actually pretty good at dealing with logic statements when they represent real-life decision-making. But the computer needs to evaluate every expression until it can determine whether the condition is true or false. Many beginner programmers make a mistake while trying to write this expression. Is the day Tuesday or Thursday? Notice the subtle difference between the correct code and this version. This is often the result of the fact that in English, we would say, is the day Tuesday or Thursday? However, remember that computer questions are different. So we have to ask, is the day equal to Tuesday or is the day equal to Thursday? So that the computer will understand. Computers do exactly what we program them to do. But with conditionals, we can simulate complex decision making and have the computer adapt to changes or even seem intelligent to humans. Okay, I want to point out three things from that video. Thing number one is the importance of parentheses. Uh, I guarantee that, um, you know, at some point in time you'll make a mistake about the placement of your parentheses. And so I would just always double check that to make sure that you are grouping the correct things together that you want to. Uh, thing number two is the last point that they brought up, or that she brought up, which is that common error. And so we've already talked about that in class, but just to make sure that these these logical operators should be taking in two Boolean values on either side. Um, and so if you want to say that day is equal to Tuesday or Thursday, even though we say it that way, 
uh, is not how we write it logically. We need to test to see if day is equal to Tuesday or day is equal to Thursday. And third thing is that what she said about the computer testing each part of my logical statement is actually false. Uh, we, I think we talked about that already about what's called short circuiting. Um, and if you don't remember, that's fine, but we'll get to it later. But there are times when not everything will be evaluated by the computer, and that's fine. Because as soon as the computer can make a decision about whether or not an entire statement is true or false, um, once it's given enough information, then it'll just stop there. It won't read through everything. So uh, we're going to go and look at the third version of Lemon Squeeze now. Um, go ahead and play it through again and see what it does. Um, and then talk with a partner about what has changed this time. Uh, there's an additional if else if statement that was added in. You don't have to make a flowchart again, uh, but go ahead and find it and talk about it and then modify the app so that um, there's a different username and password that you can use. Um, and you'll need it, yeah, you'll need to change both the code and the user interface. So go ahead and pause the video and take care of those two things. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the code real quick. Um, so I'm going to jump back to my code. This is the last iteration uh, that we're going to be looking at of this game. Um, and so what we can see here is uh, the new if else if statement that was added in is that we now have this login screen. Um, and so it takes in uh, the, the input from the user as far as the different username and then it takes an input from the user for the password and compares them and checks. And so now I'm checking two things each time and both statements have to be true for this to, to work out. And so uh, if I wanted to add a new username and password, that's just as easy as adding in another if else um, down here uh, because this last part is my kind of catch all. This should always be last because this is what plays if I um, do not enter a correct correct username or password, okay? Uh, and besides that, I think everything in the code remain the same. Okay, perfect. So let us jump back to the slides and finish this out. Um, so these, these different if and else statements that we have here, uh, the importance between them, I, I guess I, I have an issue with this question. What's the difference? And the answer is nothing because they're just building on each other, right? Um, they're just building on each other, but each uh, successive else or if else that's added to something gives me more options for choices uh, that I can have the, the computer um, decide about. And so uh, this will be an extremely common thing moving forward um, that we'll use these if and else statements to, to make decisions for us. And so they will get pretty complex. Um, as you can see, this is a, this is a semi-basic one that has you know one, two, three, four different comparisons that's going on. Um, and you will, of course, do this a lot with nesting if statements as well, which we'll see more of later. Um, and so the if statement is like one of the, the, the big foundational things besides obviously variables that we're gonna be working with. Um, and so actually, let's go back. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing, well, the next day that we see each other, um, is moving on to the practice part of conditionals. And so you'll actually be getting some time to uh, you know, write a lot of code on your own and, and practice with them uh, in class, whether that's going to be on Friday or Monday, Monday, depending on what we finish. Um, doesn't matter, but that'll be the next thing we're working on. Uh, so yeah, that, that's everything. Um, I hope this went okay for you guys, uh, but we'll obviously reconvene on Friday and talk about how it went.